you have told through the coming of your Son into this world rings true in our hearts and fills us with a power um, beyond what we can know as we head into a new year. Bless us with the joy, the hope, the peace, and the love that comes out of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our epistle reading for this morning is from Philippians uh, 4, and it is two verses. One is verse number 4, and one of them is verse number 8. I think they will, they will stand this morning as our um, charge, and our charge throughout this morning and also our charge throughout this season, and that is... Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it, rejoice. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if we can do those two things, rejoice always, and think about things that are pure, lovely, admirable, right, etc. Then we extend Christmas indefinitely. Um, and Christmas itself helps with that because there's nothing more joyous than the story of Christmas. There's nothing more joyous than the songs of Christmas. And there's nothing more pure to think about than that very story. And so I will read again from Luke that story that we all know so well. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace, peace to those on whom he, his favor rests. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The story we know. Matthew also adds in the wise men coming from the east. The first chapter of Luke adds the story of the angel coming to Mary to tell her of the promised child. The Gospel of Matthew includes the angel coming to Joseph to tell him as well. These characters, from just that little bit of the story, come into our imagination in so many ways. Because throughout the centuries, throughout the, the millenniums, really, people have told this story in so many different ways. And they have focused on the characters themselves, trying to draw out something about the human quality of these characters, like Mary, and like Joseph, and like the shepherds, etc. All of this idea so that we can come and understand this story better. And so I want to take a little bit of time this morning to think about some of these characters using 
the songs that have been written about them lately. And I think what this does is it allows us to take a moment to slow the story down and to really kind of feel the story and put it in a way that we can remember the story going forward so that we can think about such things and that we can rejoice always. So the first one, if we think about Mary, um, Mary Did You Know comes to mind. Um, it's a beautiful song. There is a sense in that song about telling the story. That's something that seems to be a major staple in the way that um, songs about Christmas are written these days, that there is a connection between the manger and the cross. I'm not going to do Mary Did You Know. I'm going to do another one. This one, Breath of Heaven, gets at Mary and the, the journey that she's on and the fear that she has, um, the hesitation that we all would have if we were, in fact, her. But then also, the promise of the Holy Spirit comes through in this song as well. So this is Breath of Heaven. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with a babe inside, and I wonder what I've done. Holy Father, you have come and chosen me now. To carry your son. So like Mary, we are chosen not because of anything that we've done, but because of who God is. And so that comes through, that we can experience the same joy. That'll, that invites us in that to say that the Magnificat, the joy of Mary, that song is about us as well. Here it goes, continue. I am waiting in silent prayer I am frightened by the load I bear in a world as cold as stone must I walk this path alone be with me now be Breath of heaven, hold me together, be forever near me, breath of heaven. Breath of heaven, light in my darkness, pour over me your holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven. By calling it breath of heaven, it connect, connects it to the beginning of creation where the breath was, the Holy Spirit was flying over the waters. By calling it breath, it connects all of those times where the Holy Spirit is called breath, that ruach, that it means breath itself. And it connects it to every breath that we take. Every breath we take being a gift of God, and every breath that we take being some way for us to connect to the Holy Spirit that can lead us through. There at every moment, even though we are afraid like Mary is. Powerful song. Definitely keeping our thoughts on what is pure, what is beautiful, what is right. The next one I want to do... Um, Takes us to another character, this one, Joseph. Joseph had been left out of the Christmas song story for so long. And then finally, um, this song was written um, 
a strange way to save the world. This one has those questions in it that might be our own. What is Jesus, what is God doing with this story? Why the details that he chooses? Why, and in, in that, why me? Why am I a part of this? And why is she? And why are any of us? Does it make sense? I'm sure he must have been surprised Where this road had taken him Cause never in a million life Would he have dreamed of Bethlehem Standing there had a manger he saw Message from the angel come tonight And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade Why him? With all the rulers in the world Why here? Inside the stable filled with hay Why her? She's just an ordinary girl Now I'm not one to second guess What angels have to say This is such a strange way To save the world And it is. It's a very strange way to save the world. And it's not the way that everybody has tried to save the world since. Not the way that we would do it. And maybe that invites us into the humility that we need to live into this story. Because it's not the way that we saved, we would save the world. So maybe the ways that we try cause more problems than they saw. The thing of how it could have been if Jesus had come to see he deserved there would have been no Bethlehem no lonely shepherds at his birth Joseph knew who reason love had to reach for and as he held the Savior in his arms he must have thought why me I'm just a simple man of trade why with all the rules in the world why here inside the stable Filled with hay, why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. Love had to reach far. Love has to reach beyond what our grasp is, what we can imagine. If we did it, we would set up a situation where we would choose the most worthy of our love and we would put them first. It's not what God does. It's not what God does in this story. The next amazing moment, I think, in the story to picture and to think about is the moment of Mary and the child. This is where all of the lullabies come in. Um, and my favorite lullaby, I'm not going to do um, Cradle in Bethlehem, because I've done it so much. Um, but there is a sense that this moment of, it's like before the shepherds come, and like before there is a hearty, joyous thing. There's this moment of parent and child 
and the angel, God, everything together. And so the songs that are about this lullaby all seek to create that. This one does, I think. Sleep quietly, my Jesus. Now close your dear eyes. Above you shine God's counting star like diamonds in Before side your bed an angel crew with cattle have fed your mother stands in watchful prayer and strokes your little head. Sleep quietly, my Jesus. Now close your dear eyes. Above you stands God's counting stars. Like diamonds in the sky Why does that say counting star? Two reasons One is that when we're trying to go to sleep and we can't, we're, we're told to count sheep. The Lamb of God instead counts the stars. The second reason falls in with that. Each one of those stars represents God's thoughts of us. And there's the sense that is the wholeness of the story. In a little lyric, in a song with only three minor chords, that beauty of the world, connection of the stars and the lamb and us, all in the arms of the baby trying to go to sleep. Powerful, extremely powerful. And something, again, that if we can think about constantly, it would help in our rejoicing. So there's another song um, that I think, to me, the, the song that captures the shepherds coming and finding the baby is, is what child is this? Because they're like showing up and they're like, what child is this? Um, and, and it both asks the question and answers it. Um, lately, there has been a, um, um, a mixture of two classic songs put together um, with the, with um, what child is this? And, and um, I want to sing a little bit of the counter verse that goes along with somebody singing what child is this. 
It's called Child of the Poor. Helpless, hungry, lowly, afraid, wrapped in the chill of midwinter, comes now among us, born into poverty's embrace, new light for the world. Who is this who lives with the lowly, sharing their sorrow? Knowing their hunger, this is Christ revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, a child of the poor. Who is the stranger here in our midst, looking for shelter among us? Who is this outcast? Who do we see amidst the poor, the children of God? Who is this who lives with the lonely, knowing their sorrows, sharing their hunger? This is Christ revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, child of the poor. Bring all the thirsty, all who seek peace. Bring those with nothing to offer. Strengthen the feeble. Say to the frightened heart, fear not. Here is your God. Who is this who lives with the lonely, sharing their sorrow? their hunger. This is Christ revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, a child of the poor. So if you think about that one, and you think about that as a call and response sung together at the same time as what child is this, the rest of Philippians comes through. Philippians 2, when it talks about Jesus forsaking heaven and all of the riches of heaven to come and experience life with us. It's an amazing, amazing story. Then, of course, there is the wise men and the star. I sang We Three Kings all five verses at least 20 times as the girls were practicing their dancing the other day um, for that. And the words of that song alone are amazing as each one of the gifts is brought in and talked about in terms of its symbolic significance. Um, having sung it 20 times, I chose a different one. This is a beautiful star of Bethlehem. star of Bethlehem, shining far through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone, guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of life, guiding the pilgrims through the night, over the mountains till the break of dawn. Into the land of perfect it will give out a lovely ray, a beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory. 
Give us a lamb to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. So that connects that wise man in the journey. Imagine following a star for that long. Um, those of us that were seeking to see the star, um, reminiscent of that. The other day, realized what it's like to follow a star when there's clouds. <laughs> Imagine all those cloudy days when you were waiting for the star to return to remind you of which direction you were going. Um, that certainly rings true in our experience. This last one that I'm going to do um, takes all of the images of the story and seeks to bring it into our lives at a time when we most need it, not so that we can stay where we are, but so that we can take steps and leaps forward. Um, I wrote this song on, um, as I was riding back from a wrestling tournament that I was the coach of um, with eight smelly, sleeping, stinky wrestlers. <laughs> Um, behind me sleeping as I was listening to Delilah answer people's requests and playing Christmas music that seemed to teach the stories that, or, or respond to the stories that they were telling her. I got home at three o'clock in the morning because we were in Lynchburg somewhere, I had to go all the way back to Christchurch, um, and was of course wired sat down, wrote this, and then got up and taught the next day somehow. But then this is called Leap of Faith. On a hillside late at night to a group of lonely shepherds Came a wondrous sight, changing their lives forever. They didn't hesitate, they didn't wait. They took a leap of faith on that first Christmas day. Could an angel choir really set your soul on fire that'd be enough to hear to rid you of your fear is that what it would take for you to make your own leap of faith in a foreign eastern land lived a group of magi wives Left all their plans to follow a star that filled the sky. They didn't hesitate. They didn't wait. They took that leap of faith on that first Christmas day. Could a shining star Make you travel from afar That'd be enough to see For you to really believe Is that what it would take For you to make Your own leap of faith That child sacrificed for us all Across Calvary we today hear his call since he died for you and me. We can't hesitate. We can't afford to wait. Let's take our leap of faith on this Christmas day. Could a lonely cross help you forget the cause? 
Would that be enough love sent from God above? Is that what it would take for you to make your own leap of faith? Do we really need a sign to change our minds? Let's take that leap of faith on this Christmas Day. Heavenly Father, who cared and loved us enough to send your Son into this world to experience the coldness and the hardness of poverty and hunger, of lines drawn between those who are in and those who are out, those who are worthy and those who are not. You sent your Son into that to rise above it and through it that even knowing that this world may break us down, tear us apart, leave us in tombs of our own making, that your power is strong enough to roll away any stone, to rise above any limitation that we may think exists, and destroy it forever as you have sin and death. The story of Christmas reminds us of all the details we need to live our lives for you with strength inside of fear, with hope inside of doubt. with your power growing through and beyond our weakness. Help us to think constantly of this story so that we may rejoice continuously and endlessly forever. Help us to share this story with those who are suffering reminding them that they're suffering is a, is a part of your love. That it is something that they can come through. And that even if it destroys their bodies, there is life on the other side. Be with those who are suffering grief. Grief beyond what we could even imagine. So many who have died in this last year Families broken apart. Children missed. Grandparents unseen. May the story of Christmas rise through all of it. May we find hope. May that hope give us peace. May that peace bring us a sense of joy so that we can go out and love as you have loved us. A love that breaks through lines. A, li a, a love that warms the coldness that we feel. And a love that ends limitation. For it is a kind of love that knows no end is shown through us and in life of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose name we pray when we say the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. I did not choose to include in the sermon songs the, any of the angel ones, but filled the rest of the service with those, including um, Heart the Herald Angels Sing, which was a part of the choir's anthem. So their last song fills me with the memory of being a child in church, singing on Christmas Eve, and realizing that I knew these words before I could even read and so could sing them very loudly. Angels we have heard on high. 